Question seven. Um, for the simple harmonic oscillator ground state, oh, using this fact, you can estimate the ground state energy. Um, follow the steps below for this calculation. Um, so it says to write down the total energy of the ground state in terms of um, delta x squared and delta p squared. All right, uh, let me do this first. So I am going to write down the um, so let let's say we have the ground state wave function psi not, not of x. Then the total energy. Well, total energy is uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy. So in terms of operators, this is going to be momentum squared over 2m plus uh, potential energy for simple harmonic oscillator is 1 half m omega squared x squared, x as operator. So, um, yeah, so I guess you can imagine doing this. If you are imagining taking the expectation value of the total energy, I mean, this is a uh, uh, energy eigenstate, so you don't have to take the expectation value. But to in order to connect to these expectation value expressions, you can imagine taking expectation value anyway. It doesn't hurt anything. So when you take the expectation value, and I gotta use the shorthand expression. So you know all this expectation value. It uh, you know it has it's a shorthand for this whole integral thing <laughs> that I would eventually need to do. So minding that, um, what I can write down is, um, so this 1 over 2m, it's just scalar multiplication. So all this integral that I will do in the end doesn't affect it. So I can write this first term as 1 half expectation value of momentum squared. And also because this expectation value calculation is integral and this uh, additions, you can always separate out into two integrals so that, so I can do expectation value of one and then the other. For the second term, it's gonna be plus one half m omega squared, all constant, times the expectation value of x squared. Oh, I, I guess uh, that's uh, what the, this question is getting at. So for each of these, expectation value expressions. I'm going to follow the hint and write this as delta p squared. And this is delta x squared. I think that's what this instruction is trying to guide me as delta times p squared. And I'm going to follow um, the advice here, write it as this and uh, format hint, you know, this is a distinct from this. So uh, distinct in terms of what it ought to mean and how the system actually interprets the um, algebraic expressions here, delta x squared. Because I think it's treating delta as um, just uh, another variable, not anything else. Okay. I did that. Oh, oh, I forgot m. <laughs> it's one half m here. Again, uh, this is the hallmark of a lot of um, quantum mechanical calculation, which is that there are um, tedious details you have to keep straight. So keep track of your algebra and, you know, uh, be ready to see, be ready to make some mistakes and correct it when the system tells you it's wrong. This is actually a good thing about my AutoNet, the auto-graded systems, because uh, you can spot those. You can see that you made a mistake and spot it and fix it. Okay, it says, now we bring in quantum mechanics. Now. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> for minimum uncertainty state, uh, right, that is correct. And previously we um, derived, and do I repeat it here? Well, before in the previous question, we derived that um, for this ground state, um, it actually does obey this minimum uncertainty condition. So the calculation we are doing here, one, yeah, it, uh, 
it, don't expect it to hold for everything, but it does happen to hold for this particular state. So, so okay, um, let's see here. Instruction here is rewrite the total energy in terms of x on, delta x only, constant parameters, and on omega, the characters. Okay, um, so what I have is, so in P, what I have is, okay, uh, delta X, delta, oh, well, sorry. Uh, let me first copy down the result from A above, uh, which is that my total energy can be expressed in terms of um, these uncertainty, um, uncertainties, one half M, delta p squared plus one half m omega squared delta x squared and what this is 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 uh, um, equation is with too many unknowns um, so we are trying to figure out the total energy oh wait let me not use t because that actually has different meaning in different context total energy um, it is two unknowns delta p uh, the momentum uncertainty and Position uncertainty and technically the energy is also an unknown. Um, so too many unknowns. We are trying to reduce the number of unknowns, and one way to do that is introduce additional relationships, which is this minimum uncertainty relationship, uncertainty in position, um, and this definition-wise is delta x squared square rooted. <laughs> Again, um, just minding that. Um, times uh, delta p is equal to h bar over 2. So, so since I want to express the total energy in terms of delta x only, um, I think what I want to do is solve this for delta p. Then it's uh, h bar over 2 times uncertainty in position. So plugging it in here, I get my total energy is equal to 1 over 2m times h bar squared over 2 squared 4. And this is delta x squared. I'm going to write it as delta, just 1, x squared plus 1 half m omega squared delta x squared. Yeah. All right. Oh, um, yeah. So here I'm explicitly relating the uncertainty in momentum and uncertainty in the, the position. So I haven't actually applied the minimum uncertainty quite yet because so far all I've done is, is this is the relationship between them. So, so this is looking complicated, but that's fine. I uh, hope it's gonna simplify in the upcoming steps. So let me, I'm just gonna replace the delta p squared with h bar, so h over two pi squared, divided by um, four times delta x squared. All right, oh wait. Okay, so that should be it. And in part C is where we now um, now try to assert that, well, what's the minimum? We can get this, um, well, how do you put it? So, so you can look at it this way. You can look at it as, I have some expression with, uh, uh, three free parameters. I've constrained one of them by insisting that Heisenberg uncertainty principle holds. Yeah. That left me with two variables in my equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain this expression further by saying that I'm going to look for a total energy that's consistent with this expression here while minimizing it. 
Well, so I'm trying to look for, you know, the ground state, the minimum energy state possible. So, so that's what I'm doing. And the, the calculus, pro, so the question says using calculus. <laughs> and the calculus, uh, calculus procedure for this is pretty simple. Um, what you do is you take the derivative of the total energy in terms of delta x and you set that derivative equal to be zero so that you have minimum possible uncertainty in terms of delta x. So, so let me do that. Wonder if, uh, you know what? Uh, let me do this calculation a little bit simpler for myself. And I think I can insist this in terms of um, delta x squared. I think that's going to... So uh, let me just do a quick substitution of this delta x squared as my, I don't know, parameter capital D. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to capital D of 1 half m h bar squared over 4d plus... 1 half m omega squared d. I think that calculation will um, still lead me to the same final result. So the first term, I get minus h bar squared over uh, 2 times 4, 8, m, and then, you know, d, I got this minus from d to the minus 1, bringing the exponent down as coefficient. And then the new exponent is d to the minus 1, minus 1. So it's minus 2 here, plus 1 half m omega squared. And d just goes away. That's kind of why I wanted to do it this way. Um, set this equal to 0. And I'm going to solve for d here. Oops, uh, no minus 2 there putting in the denominator is my version of minus. So solving it for d, what I end up with is, I'm just going to do most of it in my head. Um, so I m imagine moving this over and then move d over by multiplying both by, sides by d squared. Oh, oh, oh I, I see. Uh, I think this is the reciprocal of what I should have written. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> This is what happens when you try to do the algebra in your head. So, um, what this, the thing that I was trying to do in my head was one half m omega squared h bar squared over a m d squared. Um, solve it for d squared. So it should be d squared is equal to goes over here. The rest moves over here. H bar squared over two over eight for m squared omega squared. So it's the exact reciprocal of this. No. Yeah, me. Doesn't cut and paste, maybe. Okay, one divide by. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Tedious algebra. Uh, it um bane of uh, shortcut takers. All right. Um Okay, so for part D, um I know what the answer is, so I'm just going to um, <laughs> write in the answer. Here the answer will end up being h bar, so, or h over 2 pi, times omega. And not ending there, it uh, omega uh, divided by 2, uh, because it's the ground state. And when you plug in the uh, value of delta x mean into these, um, and you go through the algebra, this is what you will get. And don't know that the end is normally an estimate like this is just that an estimate. Um, it uh, there's a great deal of connection between estimate of this kind and um, and what we call dimensional analysis that you will see me do uh, later in the class. And um, and anyways, uh, so this kind of estimate usually gives an answer that's within an order of magnitude. Here, because of the property of the uh, simple harmonic oscillator ground state, it ends up being the exact answer.